Hi, my name is Sam Posen. I'm an associate scientist here at Fermilab. I work in the Applied Physics and Superconducting Technology Division, and I've been here at Fermilab for four years. Particle accelerators have a lot of different components. Uh, you need a source of particles. You need a way to manipulate the particles. You usually use like magnets to bend the beam and focus the beam. You need something to do with your particles, like a collider that has a detector. Um, and you also need a way to accelerate the particles. And the acceleration is the part that I work on. The devices that we use to do this are superconducting radio frequency cavities. When I first heard it, you know, I know what each of those terms mean, but I've never heard them together like that. Um, you know, a cavity in this case is something that uh, stores energy. And it happens to store electromagnetic energy at radio frequencies. And by making it superconducting, it does that with extremely high efficiency. So we make this out of something with very low resistance, a metal called niobium, that allows you to accelerate particles very, very efficiently. My research focuses on making accelerator technology better so that we can have the most scientific reach possible when we build a particle accelerator. So that means that we can understand more of the you know, secrets of the universe if we have better cavities. We use cryogenics to cool our superconductors down. Superconductors need to be very cold to operate, very close to uh, absolute zero. Liquid nitrogen isn't cold enough for what we do. It's 77 degrees above absolute zero. Our superconductors turn superconducting at about nine degrees above absolute zero. All right, so here we have a superconducting cavity. We would actually test this by putting a large number of uh, temperature sensors around this thing. And so what we do is locate where the hot spots are and where the cold spots are and cut little samples out of them. And they look like this. Then we'll put this into our microscope, look at it, see what it looks like, compare it to one of the, the cold spots, and say, hey, this is the kind of stuff we want to avoid. How can we modify our treatment processes to improve things? How can we understand how these features are influencing the superconductivity on the surface? So for the last several decades, the material of choice for superconducting cavities, the thing that I work on, has been niobium. Niobium is an excellent superconductor, um, but we think we can do better. Niobium is easy to work with, but now we're exploring working with new materials. And the material that I've been working with is something called niobium tin. I actually was fortunate enough to get uh, an early career award, so I have a grant to do my own research project to study this material. So we're experimenting with ways to uh, coat cavities with films of this material in order to enhance their properties. These days, uh, I spend my spare time planning a wedding. It is a lot of work, uh, and it, it really takes up a lot of my time outside of the lab. You could call me a co-project manager at the moment. Um, and it's really fun, uh, but it is a lot of work. When I'm not trying to plan the wedding, uh, I really enjoy um, doing things like, uh, lately I've been doing a lot of escape rooms, which is really fun, and uh, playing weird, fun, complex board games with friends.